Surprise! I'm not in my parents' kitchen anymore. I've moved out yet again, and we're on the new set of Kitchen Hits for at least the next 14 months, if they don't kick me out. Today I'm sharing a recipe with you that I literally have eaten my entire 27 years for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner all the time. It's a staple in my house, and I'm sure if you're Italian-American, you can relate too. This is my go-to chicken cutlet recipe. All right, first things first, we're gonna get our chicken ready. I'm using whole chicken breasts, but you can buy chicken cutlets at the store already pre-sliced. It's a little bit more expensive, so if you can do it yourself, you should. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my knife and go through the thickest part of the breast, pressing my hand flat on top of it, so you're gonna get all that like shungad chicken stuff on you, but just like whatever, you'll, you'll live. And then using like sawing motions, gently run your knife through the chicken and opening it up sort of like a book as you go, so you can see what you're doing. Voila. And if you want to, you can pound these thinner after the fact so that they're all kind of an even thickness and they'll cook the same. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Easy peasy, chicken cutlet squeezy. <laughs> and don't be dirty, wash your hands. First, I'm gonna season my flour with a little bit kosher salt and black pepper because nobody likes bland chicken cutlets. Normally, I would use um, pie plates for this, but they're still at mommy's house, so we're, we're improvising. I'm gonna whisk up my eggs. I'm not seasoning my breadcrumbs because they already come pre-seasoned with herbs and spices and cheese and all this good stuff, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. Now let's move on to breading our chicken. First things first, dropping it into the flour. Coat it very well, do a little shimmy shake. Make sure you get it all over your counter. And then from the flour into the eggs. And what you really should do is have one dry hand and one wet hand so that your hands don't get all like cakey with breadcrumbs and stuff and then right into the breadcrumbs. And make sure you press it into the chicken so that the breadcrumbs go into all the nooks and crannies. And then shake it off, transfer to a plate, and repeat. Last one, now it's time to fry it up. Okay, first things first, we have to heat up our, okay, I don't know how to use this stove top because I'm still new here. Um, and it's electric, so it's gonna take 45 minutes. Mom and Mr. Gas Stove, so much. I'm gonna add a pretty healthy amount of olive oil and do not judge me for using olive oil here. Um, I like the flavor of it, I don't care if it's more expensive, I don't cut corners when it comes to pellets. And neither should you. You know your oil is hot enough when you drop a few breadcrumbs in there and it sizzles. So this technique is called shallow frying because the item that I'm cooking is not fully submerged in the oil, it only goes about halfway up. And I'm using olive oil, which is not traditional. Typically you would use like a canola or a vegetable, something with a higher smoke point. But I'm keeping this at a pretty medium high heat because I want the chicken cutlets to cook evenly through before browning on the outside. So I'm not worried about burning the oil. So what I'm looking for before I flip the chicken is to make sure that there's a nice golden ring around the edge, which means that it's pretty much halfway cooked, and at that point I can flip it and cook it on the remaining side. I like mine deep golden brown. All right, these are looking pretty good. I'm gonna give them a flip. Honestly, the color on these is beautiful. Like, I really do deserve an award for making the best chicken pellets. Oh wait, actually, I already got one. Okay, my cutlets have been cooking for about five to seven minutes per side, and they're looking pretty good. So I'm going to transfer them to a paper towel lined plate so that the excess oil can drain off while I finish cooking the rest of my cutlets. Okay, it's as easy as that. Our cutlets are done. If you're making a large batch, which I typically do, I like to keep them in the oven on a tray so they're warm. And I'm gonna top it with a little bit of Malden, some flaky sea salt, because I'm bougie like that, and a little squeeze of lemon. 
Time to eat. This is, this is my piece, like the crispy ends. Mm -hmm. Always hot. delicious. I would just like to thank all the chickens who have given me the most beautiful, most juicy, tender breasts over the last, I don't know, 27 years, and also 4C breadcrumbs. I would, I would not be here without you.